I was actually just discussing the budget report before you came by. You must be very talented to have finished all of your student council duties so quickly that you can track me down to make sure I don't forget my own. <laughs> it's just Amish's voice. That's bad funny. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, are you accusing me of slacking off? It seems like you're confusing me with yourself. I don't think so. That would be a very difficult thing for me to do, comparing myself to you. You're right. The difference between us is like heaven and hell. And it's not hard to guess which one you might represent. <laughs> uh, the air between them ripples with the heat of their entirety. Well, not really. They can't disguise it anymore, though. Even Misha looks like she's beginning to understand the real nature of this conversation. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> he Chan, don't you slack off either. What are you talking about? Aren't you taking part in the festival, Hee-chan? You are, aren't you? Then I hope you're going to do a lot more to make sure it goes smoothly than this person. I don't understand why Shizune is suddenly getting mad at me. Um, Don't drag me into this. I've done my part. Hey, come on. Give me a little some slack. Yeah, I know, really. Like, leave her alone. Jesus Christ. Kind of being bullies at the moment. But then again, I... <sighs> Alright, I'll try and defend Lily and see what happens. Hey, I'm the new guy, remember? It's not like I could have done much, even if I wanted. That's right, you shouldn't expect the transfer student to jump right into it on his first week. The only taking my side feels oddly comforting, so I decide to back her up too. Yeah, you're being unreasonable with us both. Excuses, excuses. Miss Class Rep has had plenty of time to deal with her report. And we repeatedly offered a, you a position to help with the student council work, but you refused to commit yourself to making the festival ex as successful. Yeah, but as I said back then, I'm not sure if... I don't have time for this right now. No matter what I do, it will mean being drawn into a confrontation with Suzune, and that is what she wants. Whatever, forget it. I turn my back at them. Lily, class is going to be starting soon, so we can talk more later. I'll tell Hanaku you were looking for. I can feel Suzune, fr Suzune freezing. Maybe this is the first time she has ever been ignored in such a blunt manner. Thank you, Sal. I'll leave now then. She gives me the sweetest smile I've seen all week and turns on her heels to make her exit. And now we're going to be stuck with them and this is not going to end well. As soon as Lily walks out the door, I suddenly start feeling relinked about turning to face Suzune. I can feel her eyes burning into my back and can't bring myself to look at her. She must be furious. I keep expecting Misha to say something to illuminate the tension, but it really is wanting too much. In the end, I go back to my seat and listen to the sound of Shizune's footsteps as she marches out of the room. She doesn't return until a few minutes before class. I think I did the right thing. I mean, sure, the kids were sick and stuff, but you can't keep bashing her like that. I mean, seriously, not in front of me. I'm not the kind of person who takes that crap. Uh, Hanaku doesn't come to the class morning to the morning class at all, leaving her seat looking empty and lonely in the back of the classroom. I have to tell her that Leah was looking for her if I see her later. After the events of this morning, class is pretty boring in comparison. I turn the pages of my textbook lazily. Uh, sorry. I have a bit of catching up to do, despite trying to keep up with my studies at all at the hospital. Uh, but I'm not feeling that enthusiastic about it. The clock at the front of the room sounds unbearable loud, unbearably loud. The teacher hasn't said anything in over seven minutes, instead opting to cover the board in rows and rows of equations taken directly from the book. The mythic clashing of the chalk on board, blackboard seems to synchronize perfectly with the ticking of the clock. I start to copy down the equations, just to pass the time, even though they are right here there in the textbook. Bling, bling. When the bell rings, I'm not in a hurry because I have nothing to do. So I stay for a while, reviewing what he reco recovered in class today. I prefer to leave last anyway, so I don't have to deal with crowding in the hallways. I know Suzune and Misha have also stayed behind, talking to someone from another class. Suzune is signing so fast that her hands make noises like swords cutting through the air. Maybe there's pent-up anger in there. Misha's trying desperately to keep up, but it's clear she can barely manage to even understand her. Put my head down. Whatever they're discussing looks like serious business. Suzune signs to the point where her wrists crackle, and Misha struggles to spit it out in word form. Sometimes she trips over herself like she's dealing with tongue twisters. And then on top of that, she has to sign back anything the other girl says. Seems like a rough job. Misha looks tired, like she's about to faint. 
Luckily for her, the bases are soon finished and the girls sit down on their seats again. Ugh, I'm so tired. She's hanging her head limply on her desk, looking exhausted. I'll use the opportunity to recounsel with Shizune a bit, without getting roped into the student council thing again. Though I suspect that door is now closed for me. Festival preparations must be tough for you. Indeed, the people in this school seem to take, be taking the festival very seriously. Whenever I see people idling around before and after classes, they're always talking about their plans for it. It's kind of neat to see everyone being so enthusiastic about it. I'm probably the only one who doesn't have something to do. Suzune scuffs at me first, as if trying to decide whether to ignore or sneer at me. But in the end, she starts signing without doing either. Misha perks up, looking at her hands with slightly unfocused eyes. She signs with harsh, heavy, dramatic strokes. Misha translates her signing into speech for me. She says it so well, it's almost like Suzune is acting, actually speaking, transmitting her th thoughts directly through Misha. She must have practiced it vigorously. Well, of course, we're in the student council, you know, so we're pretty busy. It's an important duty of ours to ensure the success of the festival with all our strength. We should shame ourselves in front of the past student council generations if the festival were to fail. That's why there must be no flaws. No, uh, I think that was in encumbrances. No, nothing that might make the festival short of perfect. Suzuni's passionate speech and meeches and acting are really oddly fitting of them. Oh, hello. Oh, it's Hanaku. I look over my shoulder and see Hanaku peering timidly into the classroom, most of her body hidden behind the door. Hey, playing delinquent again? Hanaku blushes hard at me to straightforward jab, even if it was only in jest. Suzune stares at her probingly, causing Hanaku to look down and start backing away to the point where only her fingers can be seen wrapping nervously around the edge of the door. Maybe she is showing her dislike of Hanaku by associating of her dislike of Lily. It appears so, and Hanaku probably knows it as well. What is it, Hanaku? H has Lily been here? Sorry, haven't seen Sato. She uh, came by in the morning, though. Hanako keeps looking uneasily at Shizune, who stares back at her with her usual studying gaze. What is she trying to do? Of course, Shizune isn't going to look away, and she is intimidating enough as it is, so I can only imagine how terrified Hanako must would be. It is as it is a little uncomfortable watching Hanako's reaction to Shizune's normal behavior. This is what happens when two people of two different extremes meet, it seems. Do, do you know where she is? If she has any sense in her head, she's in her classroom working on their festival project. But who knows what that woman is loitering about? You need to find her? She was looking for you in the morning, but I guess you have missed each other. She waits a little without answering the simple question, looking awfully like she's not sure if it's proper to answer such a question. Y yeah. I can come with you, if it's okay. Naka nods fractionally. Fractinally still on guard. <laughs> her shoulders stiff like wood. I get the feeling that she might be more comfortable by herself after all, but it's too late to back now. Uh, back off now. She has this really troubly, troubled expression. She seems to wear almost constantly. One that makes me constantly be on guard myself. I wonder why. I kind of understand why she always seems to be so wary, or maybe more like why there could be a person like her. But I still have no idea how I should act around such a person. It's dinner time soon. Were you planning to meet with Lily? She nods slightly. So she must have been trying to get in the cafeteria. Well, there's something of a dinner crowd, just like the cafeteria is crowded during lunch. It's not as bad because dinner time is longer than lunch hour. But I can understand why Hanaku could be discouraged from going in. I pick up my bag and we take our leave. Hanaku skips a little to beat my initial pace, so I slow down to match her speed. Doesn't take long for us to be walking at the comfortable pace down the hallway. It almost feels like we're going t for a stroll together, something that I can't say I've really done with the girl before. Uh, Hanaku doesn't seem to be thinking the same thing, though. Even though we are walking in the same pace, she never comes within arm's reach of me. I guess she's a little uncomfortable around me. Guess how shy she is. There doesn't seem to be much helping it, at least for now. By the time we arrive at the cafeteria, there's not much of a crowd there, but Lily is nowhere to be seen. Naku's head sinks even lower than usual. Have you looked somewhere else already? J just the library I was reading. So she does spend the classes she skips at the library. Ah, so not exactly a thorough search then. 
Well, if I had to guess, she'd be in her own class like Suzune said, right? Right. With the slightest of non Tanaka agrees with my reasoning. God, she's being so awkward. <laughs> it's like I need tumble layered silk gloves with padding to even begin interacting with her. Some small tuck might help her become a little, a bit more used to me. Used to me. It's isn't hard to tell that the silence between us is hovering on the edge of both our minds. So you and Lily usually hang out together after class, right? D yes. I'm not quite sure what I expected from her answer, nor why I even asked the question. That much was rather obvious, after all. She doesn't seem like the type to cultivate a social circle, either. So I suspect that Lily may well be her only friend. Must be a pain being in different classes, I'm guessing. She gives a short, almost reflective nod, compared to Lily's careful thought about her actions and speech. Hinaku hastens to make her answers as prompt and as short as possible. Lily comes by the classroom, though, even when she's busy. She gives a small smile as she says it, ev evident evidently appreciating the fact that Lily goes out of her way to help her. It's pretty cute, really. There isn't any need to say more. Both of us content that the decoction reached an end. <laughs> I told you, my reading's going to be bad today. I'm sorry, guys. Um, as we ascend the stairs back to the lobby, we are met by a group of students heading downstairs like it's school of fish, moving from one feeding area to another. They seem to be to ugh, they seem to be keeping mostly to themselves. Before I can notice her doing so, Naku has moved around behind me. Yeah, you're alright. Just just keep going. The students pass up without as much as a second glance, and Naku takes up position to my side again as we enter the building. Her momentarily rip reprieve from her an annex annex Oh the god Anxiety all but snatched away. <laughs> oh my god, my reading today is horrible. Even as we climb towards the third floor, she doesn't seem to relax. It isn't as if I've never known a shy person before, or even shy girls, but Hanaku seems to be pretty far beyond what I'd call normal in fear of other people. If it weren't for Lily's, if it wasn't for Lily acting as a meditator, I doubt Hanaku would have even been able to walk beside me like this. Seems to completely shut down in the presence of others. The rest of the walk up to Lily's classroom continues in straight and silence, which I rue her in an inability to socialize at all. After we make our way to up, up the stairs, the noise coming from Lily's classroom is audible from halfway down the hallway. I wasn't expecting such a din at all. Well, I guess we found her. That wasn't hard. Did Naku come here first, then come for, to me for backup? Well, if that's true, then at least she's starting to trust me a little. That can only be a good thing. Eventually, two of us reach the door to class 3-2, with Naku less than suddenly positioning herself behind me. I open the door. Man, loud in here. Shut up. Quiet. 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 I can't hear. Shut up. Quiet. Quiet. Batman's here. Be quiet. <laughs> Inside is a hive of activity, seemingly every student in the class talking at once as they work hurriedly on their separate tasks. Going to the paint cans, decorating, and banners being made it must be for the upcoming school festival. I guess my first priority should be finding Lily. There. Finding her among the dead is surprisingly uneasy, not the least because of her looks. With a couple students gathered around her as she stands at the front of the class, she seems to be in charge of preparations or at least busy organizations organizing them. Carefully negotiating a path through the very students hunched over the floor for lack of deck space, I raise a hand entirely out of habit as we finally reach Lily. Hi, Lily. Sup. Sup, girl. She pricks her head as she breaks off talking to a noticeably small girl. She must be her classmate, trying to listen as best she can. Sorry, who? Oh, sorry. Hisao. I have Hanaku, too. <laughs> Hi. She's pretty skittish. Considering the number of people around, it isn't too hard to work out why. Lily takes a moment's pause to access the situation before turning to the other student once more, once again. For the moment, just ask Mori, Mor, Moria for his advice. Kenji's busy with painting one of the banners already. Oh, Jesus Christ, he's in here. A quick nod, and she bounces off, fingers carefully sliding along the wall's face of oriented. Wait, Kenji? That Kenji? A quick turn around. A quick turn about. Lean to the side to see past Tanaku. Sure enough, in the corner of the room, Kenji's hunched over a sheet of cloth as he paints it. His eyes remained only inches from the brush, reminding me of how close he had to be to make out my face when I met him. Sorry about that. Our class doesn't have many students with even particular eyesight, so they're in high demand. That's right. Class 3-2 was specially for students with poor vision. 
Preparing for the festival must be pretty er erudist for them. Need a hand? I could give you help if you need some. Maybe Hanako could too. She has set her mind on something would be would would do her good, but I doubt she has the courage to ask outright. She quickly nods in affirmation, affirmation, toward uh, afterwards. So I'm content I had the right move. Lily, oh Jesus, <laughs> Lily gives a noticeable sign of relief. Ah, that's good. This might actually get finished before everyone goes off to dinner now. Would you be able to help the person painting the main banner? It's a task for him to do, but nobody else can help. Kenji? Sure. She seems surprised that I know him. I can't really blame her. I take it you've met? Our rooms are in the dorm. Our rooms are in the dorm are... Whoa, that was mad confusing. Our rooms in the dorm are right next to each other. Hard to miss each other, really. Well, it's good to see you're getting friends so fast. Friend. I wonder if that's the right word to use for him. Kanaka silence during the proceed reminds me of the reason I had... I put her up to the helping in the first place. We'll go help then. He knows what he's doing, right? That's right, just ask if you have any problems. Cursing and ascent, Hanaku and I begin another trek along the classroom. Kenji sits crouched on the floor, his gaze fixed on the white cal a calico, I don't know how to say that, in front of him. Hey Genji. No answer. He continues dragging his paint strokes, soaked brush along the large half painted kanjai that stretched on the sheet and pencil. Kenji! Huh? What? Who is it? If this is the way he treats cl class members, it's no small wonder he's working on this alone. It's me, Hisao, from the Rai Rai. I know that, man. What are you doing here, though? His dismissive attitude annoys me. He must be the type to really get focused on his work, hating to be disturbed by anyone until he's done, I suppose. While we talk, the sound of Naka's footstep as she walks out from behind me reminds me that she's here. I was just going to help you with the banner, Hanaku and I, that is. Ha <laughs> hello. Oh, uh, hey, I, I guess that's okay. As soon as Hanaku enters the equation, his demeanor takes a complete about face. His sudden foxes disability is slightly unsettling. All right, woman, on second thoughts, this may not have been a great idea after all. Whoa, back up. I need I need breathing room. I right, oxygen, oxygen, I need this. How can I grindly set ourselves down on the opposite side of the cloth banner to Kenji? Nodding the several small paint thins on the ground around it. Class 3-2. Noodle stand? Oh, stall. Sorry. <laughs> you guys selling noodles at the festival on Sunday? Yeah, some small... Some stalls outside or something. Or something. His non-committable nature sparks a fair amount of suspicion on my behalf. The task at hand comes first, though. So how do you want to split this? We do borders while you do the text, or do you want to switch and do the borders? Text is mine. You do borders. He has surprisingly strong feelings on the topic. As I reach over the garbage brush, I notice Hanaku is already debating between colors to use. By the time I put brush the cloth, she's already started on a delicate pattern. Looks like my idea of taking her mind off everyone around here works. With the dark blue stroke, the three of us silently get to work. Not before Kenji takes advantage of Hanaku's working to lean towards me and whisper conspiratorially cons <laughs> Okay, man, why are you here? Hanaka just wanted some to find Lily, that's all. Apparently, this approves of my mo motivations. I get it. It looks like I misjudged you. You're infiltrating them, aren't you? Going deep on the cover. I should have guessed. Letting the truth slip by him would probably be better than outright lying or annoying him in any case. Is that why you're here? Obviously. It sucks, but there's no way to get intel than going in yourself. We gotta stick together, man. This is a harsh school, a harsh world. Yes, very harsh. Ah, <coughs> oh, that hurt. <laughs> when a burp hurts you. Uh, <laughs> he misses my true meaning as he leans back. Satisfied, I'm sympathetic to his cause. I'd better get down to my work. Finished. Looks like I am too. Good job. Divas, connect up the lines of our patterns. Mine being as close as a copy as I could manage of hers. With a grunt, I leave her myself up from the floor and look around. Aside from Naku and myself, there's only Kenji left finishing off a sign, as well as Lily and a couple of students talking about themselves in the classroom. Looking at my watch, it's no surprise it's getting pretty late. Need a hand? I offer a hand to Naku, which she uses to get herself up. As she does, I can't help but glance at her wrist. If her scars extend to uh, even to there, then how much of her body was burned? 
I feel a pang of guilt about it, however, as she quickly covers her wrist with her other hand. It looks good, doesn't it? She looks surprised for a moment before noticing that I mean the batter. It does, I guess. Her smile shows that she feels a slight sense of pride in the result, just as I do. With the floor significantly neater for the decorations being placed on desks and shelves, it's much easier to get to Lily as we cross the room. We finished the banner, I guess that's all that needs to be done. Lily gives an appreciative nod. Thank you, Yusao, Hanaku. If there's any way I can thank you. It's fine, be sitting in my room studying, at any rate. I don't mind either. She nods before suddenly remembering one last person. Oh, is Kenji still there? Just as I open my mouth, Kenji gives the answer from the other side of the room. Yeah, I just finished. He carefully slides his sign onto an empty section of shelf to dry before quickly walking past us and out the door. Oh, see ya, man. Bye. Wow. <laughs> he only gets one line. See ya, man. Bye. <laughs> Um, the remaining two students say their goodbyes to Lily before taking their cue to leave as well, leaving only three of us. Well, I guess that's everyone. I hope you don't have to do anything like that again. Working past school time? Indeed. The class plans this year were ambitious, maybe too ambitious. The stalls look nice, though. She's right. It shows that a lot of work's gone for them. My, my. I'm sure a lot of us would be glad to hear that. At least now there's not much work to do until the festival itself. Um, it's pretty late. Should we go? It's probably a good idea. Are you going back to the dorms as well, Hassau? Yeah, I guess I'll tag along. The nighttime lightning really makes the garden look quite different. Compared to the usual look, look of lush greenery, things are much more calm. Being that it's so late, the lack of students around probably helps. The odd one or two can be seen scurrying to and from the dorms, trying to eke the most of their approaching curfews, but no more. All that can be heard is our footsteps, in addition to Liz Kane regularly gently tapping the ground in front of her. It's nice to finally be able to relax a bit after the mad rush during school. Without even noticing, I let out a small yawn. Damn it, he actually made me yawn. God <sighs> oh, damn it! Hassau, what are you doing to me? Tired? Yeah. You know, it's freaking 9 dirty while I'm recording this. I'm getting tired, okay? Let me allow. <laughs> Yeah, still getting used to the flow of things, I guess. The, uh, thing with Suzune took me kind of off guard, though. I gripped my teeth a little at the candid mention of their rather public spat. That said, I do want to sort out what in the world was behind it. Ah, about that. I'm sorry about it being so public. Suzune and I go back some ways. Her voice seems slightly irritated as she remembers Suzune, obviously unwilling to discuss it any further. I glance to Hanaku for her views on this, but her expression is, unsurprisingly, evasive and difficult to read. Either way, I guess her apologies for it is something, even if my curiosity goes unanswered. I'll be glad once the festival is over in any case. The change of topics welcome, clearing, clear, clearing the thickening air quickly. I can imagine. My old school's festivals were a lot more low-key than this. Yamaku stresses the idea of the school community, so the staff likes to make our festivals in such special occasions. And yet the students are the ones who do the work. What an unfair world. <laughs> Hanaka and Lily both chuckle in agreement, savor the fact that none of the staff are around to hear our grumbling. I suppose coming from a strict all-girls school helped me a bit with Yamaku. Compared to there, Yamaku is much more relaxed. That'd go away towards explaining her well-read speech and behavior in any case. As we come up to dormitory, dormitories, it eventually comes time for us for our respective rooms. See you, Lily, Hanaku. The two both give polite nods before setting off to the women's dorms, just next to the guys. As, as is to be expected of such an uh, arrangement, there's a staff member casually patrolling around the side to prevent any nighttime shenanigans. Walking past them, I stretch... I quickly stretch my arms over my neck, both quite sore after having worked on the floor so long before walking to my room. It feels good to actually have direction, though. After so long in the hospital, the everyday facts of studying, homework, and teachers seems almost a, a blessing. I guess if things continue like this, my time at Yamaku might turn out okay. After hearing to the nurse's nagging voice in the back of my head, I set my alarm clock to wake me up early enough to go jogging again. I made a promise I'm going to keep it. Besides, Emi is bound to rat on me if I don't show up. 
But it's not all that bad. Tight, tight, mother chocker. And then here comes the heart again. Um, I don't remember. I don't actually know how long I've been recording. I think it's been about almost an hour. But I really do want to continue. So I think I'm actually going to continue maybe for like another half an hour or so. And then I'm going to call it a session. Um, Because it's getting, it's getting interesting now. It's getting pretty interesting. Um, my morning alarm goes off, and I flail about uselessly for a while until I remember that I, I decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health, after all. Sure, things haven't been great lately for me, but that hasn't made existence so intolerable that I'm not going to try everything I can stay. I didn't read the rest. Uh, <laughs> besides, it's all about exerting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone in my run. Yumi has apparently been here for some time. Looks like she has already worked up a, a good sweat. Just when, just when the hell does she come down here anyway? Oh, it's you. I'm surprised to see you again. Why's that? Well, not many people actually managed to come back for a second try. She frowned, seemingly annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a volunteer basis, so it's not that big of a shock. And I guess it's pretty early in the morning. I shrug and suddenly it appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. The frown disappears entirely, and she seems to snap back to her previous train of thought. So come on then. What? You're here to run again, aren't you? Uh, you're here to run again, right? Well, yeah. So come on. I find myself suddenly grabbed and yanked onto the track. Things seem to be set on mirroring yesterday's run. That is, I seem to be struggling while Amy moves with an effortless that I find inevitable. It's incredible bothersome to be so easily worn out. I know I should be patient, work towards things gradually, but it's difficult to stay positive about this. We round the track and start on our second lap. Amy seems to have grown impatient, keep me in pace, and begins to pull away. This is where I gave out yesterday. Will I be able to do more? Uh, I know he has the heart condition, but I really want to see how he's going to do. So he pushed himself a little bit yesterday. So let's try and push him again. Let's see if he can go a little bit more. 